Hey, what's up? This is Václav. See, I have started my home assistant journey at the end of 2017 or beginning of 2018, perhaps. During these almost five years, the home assistant has improved a lot. And I have the feeling that the speed it improves gets faster and faster. And the same is true about the home automation consumer market in general. These innovations allow us to do things that we couldn't do before. The things either didn't exist they were too expensive or too complicated. But now they exist. And because I like gadgets, I buy them. And if I think they're worth sharing, I make videos about them. But it's not only about new gadgets. Looking back those five years, many things I did back then can now be done much simpler, better or smarter. And I sometimes get such comments under some of my older videos. Why did you do it so complicated? There's an easier way to do that. Well, now there is. But I usually do not go back and rewrite things that just work or make a new version of video doing exactly the same using the new tools. But sometimes I do. I have recently done quite a robust maintenance where I refactored quite a few areas that were done a long time ago, given the constraints of the state of the tools, devices, and my own skills at the time. And I brought them up to date with the current state of development. In general, the things will work the same as before, but there are quite a few small improvements. And in home automation, it is the small details that make a difference between being smart or annoying, at least for me. Also, all the things I did was to align them to the features that will further be developed. So they will keep improving, unlike the legacy solution that was often custom, frozen in time and will become obsolete, it will have to be rewritten anyhow. So it's just a matter of time. So this is a summary of the things I have done and I will make a brief video about each of these changes. First, ESP Home. It joined the party a bit later. In the beginning, I was loading Tasmora to all the devices, but now I either use the device's original firmware or I load it with ESP Home. The main reason, if you ask me, is I like the API. It's fast and reliable. I can also do quite advanced scripting inside a device. And there are some cool features introduced lately, such as the ESP Web Tools, or one of the cool new tools that came recently is the Sprinkler Controller. One of the early projects I made was an irrigation controller made of Sonoff 4 Channel Pro combined with IT Display. And I still use it and it works great, but it's all custom logic with timers and global variables and different events triggering what happens. And it can be done much simpler and it's actually much more powerful and much simpler to use. So I updated that. And since I'm sharing this project on GitHub, I will update that one as well. So there'll be a video coming with a quick update. Next one is a media player. Again, a new addition to ESP Home, together with some small, cool devices like this uh, M5 ESP32, pretty small and powerful. But the biggest game changer for me is the music assistant. Again, I had a custom dashboard with lots of helpers and scripts and automations that allowed me to control multimedia in my house. And it worked quite nice. But if I wanted to change something, say at a radio station, a new playlist or configure a new speaker, I had to figure out where it is in the code and change that. And the music assistant, it just works. And it supports YouTube music that is otherwise unavailable. And I still do have some automations in there. For example, to control my old Denon amplifier through an infrared blaster automatically so it works seamlessly or to control the whole thing by a Zigbee IKEA button. So there'll be another video. Speaking of Zigbee IKEA buttons, I have uh, early on decided to use Zigbee to MQTT over ZHA. At the time, I tried both and for me, ZHA was not ready yet. But the time is changing and I believe it is ready now. There's a ton of development in the area, so it'll keep improving. And uh, some of the Zigbee controllers coming have a different chip that it's uh, supported by ZHA, but might not be supported by Zigbee to MQTT at the moment. So I have moved everything. It was partially automatic, partially manual operation. 
Uh, I still had to review and test everything, but it's done now. Not sure if this is for video, but maybe I'll couple it with some of the Zigbee goodies. We'll see. Then, automations. I have recently made two videos about the new Automations Visual Editor and that I have moved from Automations Manage Inside Packages to the Visual Editor experience. But obviously I didn't move all the automations uh, one to one. It just allowed me to review all my automations and refresh them, often improve them. Some of uh, them were sitting there for years. At the time the automations only allowed for a simple logic, a trigger, condition and a action, making a service call. So it was very much a single action per automation. That was it. Now I can do much more. I have more triggers, better control over the execution, but mainly there is much more actions. We can now branch the actions, have conditions inside the actions, have things run in parallel, have loops or variables. So I will show you all the automations I have how I organize them and I give you a few tips. There, Frank has a pending pull request for adding labels to entities. So if this one makes it, I would like to include that one in the video as well. I think it'll fit nicely. And finally, the dashboards. They kept evolving, I kept updating them as well, but uh, I have recently basically built a completely new dashboard from scratch based on the mushroom cards. Initially, I only intended to use them for my mobile devices, but I ended up liking them and using them everywhere. For these, uh, the channel Everywhere Smart Home made a very nice video about these, and I basically followed his idea. So I have included a link to his videos in the description, and I recommend you to check it out. Right. So a lot of news and a lot of videos are coming. So I see you there, I guess. Bye.